Defense Directives can be a very sensitive and uncomfortable topic, but it's really important for ensuring that your loved one's healthcare wishes are respected and understood. There's nothing worse than not knowing what your loved one, or even for yourself, what you want when that time comes. So here's some tips for these conversations. Choose, and this is for anyone, right? Choose the right time and place for the conversation. That's for anything that you want in life. If you wanna get something from it, you have to choose the right time and place. So finding a quiet, private setting where you can talk without interruptions. Ensuring that everyone involved is in a calm and receptive state of mind. You want to start with empathy. Acknowledge that this is a difficult topic, but emphasize the importance of planning for the future. Let your loved one know that this is about respecting their wishes and ensuring they receive the care they want. Not the care that I might want for you, but the care that you want for you. Use open-ended questions. Encourage open dialogue by asking questions that allow your loved one to express their thoughts and feelings. So an example, how do you feel about certain medical treatments in the future? Or what are your wishes for end of life care? And then a good way to kind of soften the conversation is share your own experience. Sometimes sharing your own experience or your own thoughts and a personal story can make the conversation feel more natural. So you might say something like, I've been thinking about my preferences for healthcare and wanted to talk about it with you. So then you tell them what you want in your end of life and then you can open up the dialogue. What would you like? And this isn't just about end of life, but unfortunately, this is the work we do, right? This is at a certain point we start and we end. And knowing how we want the in-between and the close to the end is really important. And then provide information. Explain what advanced directives are and why they are important. A resource that I really love and I use is called mydirectives.com. It's a My Directives website, which I can attach. And this helps, they actually have great ways to guide the conversation, provide starting points for creating these documents. Um, and just so you know, I do not endorse this website. I'm not le legally bound to them. I just use it for my personal. I assign my healthcare agent, um, and this does not replace you needing an elder law attorney, someone to really, and we'll talk about that down the road, but this really talks about what you want, how you want it, and it really brings you to understanding certain desires you might want that you don't even know you might want. So it's great for anyone, it's great for yourself, it's great for your loved ones, it's great for all. And then in the last part of you know, talking about advanced directives, it's, it's important to reassure and support. Let your loved one know that they can take their time to think about their decisions and that you're here to support them every step of the way. So reassure them that these decisions can be revisited and they can be changed as needed. So just because we want one thing today, that might change as soon as tomorrow. Something might change in your life or that, that changes. So it's important to know that this is flexible. You can change it. 